with this handbook, how this was really, in my opinion, a living, breathing entity in itself, where we, like the three of us as editors, were kind of setting up a framework saying, okay, here's kind of our format of like where we envision the handbook to be presented, because we really felt that there really hadn't been a handbook for CMC and social media that really talked about the theory, the application, and kind of been the future of where this research is going. But when we were getting some of the chapters, I know the ones that I got for the application section, and I just was amazed with the different aspects and different touch points that people were coming in with different research agendas, different topics that I may not have necessarily had really anticipated getting before. So I had everything from influencers to cancel culture, then to specific um, aspects of social media, like management, activism, healthcare. Um, and then we I had a chapter looking at the deaf community on TikTok. And for me, that was really such a, a culminating experience just to see the diversity of topics and representing different programs and pers research perspectives. So for me, it, I felt as the project evolved, it really brought to life more than I would have ever expected. So I'm I'm just thrilled with the chapters and topics that we have in the, the handbook, because I think it really is a great contribution to the body of knowledge in this area. I'm going to jump in here. I also, I, I agree. And I, what I loved about it was, I mean, I research social media, Dr. Freeberg researches social media, but we do these through different lenses and to be able to, to see the um, breadth and depth and range of a topic, like how I would interpret it was so vastly different than so many of these other researchers. Uh, and I think that's what is really good about this handbook. Um, I mean, most edited volumes have like an overarching general theme, and so so do we. But but as as Dr. Freeberg said, when we would get the um, chapter abstracts in, it was like, oh, this one's got to go. Oh, and wait, this one too. But they were just one built upon the next, and so um, yeah, it's it was a, it was a really great experience um, in the in the section that that I edited, a lot came through in the ethics of AI. So when you're, Lauren, when you're studying like human, you know, uh, and computer um, interactions, you'll see in like the third section of the book, there's quite a bit on that whole ethics of, you know, bias and, and different pieces there. So that to me was one of the biggest overarching frames in, in the third section of, of the book. And we should say that in terms of the process for a handbook, oh, yeah. that it began with these conversations, including a Zoom meeting, and then we had a call for chapters, and then uh, folks submitted these abstracts, and then we reviewed all of them and sort of placed them into the sections, the ones that were approved, and then they had a deadline to submit the chapter, the manuscript, and then I think in virtually all of the chapters there were revisions of some sort yeah. or another. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when we were talking about sort of the different lenses, and I'm also thinking about the ways in which we use concepts, because we're still at that point in this seminar. I'm thinking particularly because of the timing of our handbook about misinformation, disinformation. And I think there was at least one chapter that delved into malinformation, which I hadn't seen before. How does this, in, in your mind, play out in terms of the progression of knowledge, how, where, the direction we go with the field? Um, well, I mean, that's an area that I study quite frequently. Um, I have a, a grant through DARPA where we look at um, actually, the, my team, um, we call ourselves the media manipulators because we take, <laughs> I know, right, Dr. Friedberg, it's funny, um, but <laughs> there's four teams across the U.S. And the idea is, um, can you take something that is ground truth, so an article that is, has not been altered in any way, and manipulate it and run it through an AI to see if it can detect what's been manipulated? And so that was really what, what uh, my chapter and Jung, who is one of our PhD students um, wrote, um, we developed this theory of content consistency. So essentially every article, every um, 
uh, news mix, there is there is sort of a cadence to them. And also each journalist has their own, what we kind of like to call like a fingerprint, right? So if you read enough of my work, if you read enough of Dr. Lipschultz's work, Dr. Freeberg's work, you will see we probably use the same kinds of words over and over again, because it's just part of how we write. So that's called, that's our fingerprint, right? It's unique to us. And so what my team does is um, we take those articles and we change them. We either make it, you know, um, something benign like just randomly change a word in a headline to something that is malicious um, or, and of course, fake, right? And so then you run it through this AI. I think that that, that idea of fake information and combat, combating fake and mis and disinformation is, is everywhere, no matter you know which spectrum where you're researching. If you are in communications, if you are in media, you should be paying attention to that in some way, shape, or form. Um, because it's only going to increase. Uh, so, so yeah, I don't know if I answered your question exactly, but I, I hope I did. Dr. Freeberg, do you want to add? Yeah, I'd love to add. Yeah, I, I just found this fascinating too, and I, I absolutely agree. What I, I love about too, the concepts, and I think one of the things that this handbook really brings to the table is the fact that there's lots of definitions out there. And, and <laughs> I, I mean, I feel I keep saying, oh, it wasn't that long ago that I was a doctoral student. Then I'm like, well, wait, it was, it wasn't a bit of <laughs> time. But I remember always struggling a little bit about the, the, the concepts and really what are the definitions and how different researchers want to have their own definition in terms of what certain topics are and being researched in, in the field. And so I found it was fascinating for me. We actually had one chapter by Brandy Watkins um, from Virginia Tech who really did a comprehensive chapter looking at influencer marketing, which is a big area of obviously in social media. And I felt it was so refreshing to kind of have her walk through the process of everything that's been done and then coming up with some key definitions of what influencers or influencer marketing um, are as concepts. And so as a doctoral student, I wish I had that honestly, when I was in school, because I did some influencer work um, back in the day. Um, but that was something that I kept in mind in the chapter that I contributed with, um, with um, Tatiana, who was actually an undergraduate student. And then um, Dr. Laura Freeberg is Dr. Freeberg 1.0, aka <laughs> my mom. And we worked on the cancel culture project. And we were fascinated with how cancel culture was being researched, but it really hadn't necessarily answered the questions of really exploring, okay, people talk about cancel culture or people getting canceled, but what are the different characteristics that make one person you know, successful in surviving being canceled versus someone else who was not successful um, and not able to recover? So that was kind of a preliminary exploratory project that we really wanted to kind of delve, delve into just because I think there are a lot of unanswered questions um, in the research, but we were just kind of proposing like, hey, this is something that we needed to study further. And that's kind of where this handbook kind of comes up. I think differently from other handbooks is not only identifying concepts, but kind of putting the ball back in the courts of the reader, like whether it's doctoral students, graduate students, professors saying, okay, these are some research areas that need to be explored. And maybe this could be something that you wanna take up in your graduate studies. And your free time as professors, we have lots of free time as Dr. <laughs> Luttrell, Dr. Luttrell know, um, that's where coffee comes in, in hand. but it, it's just something to kind of giving like options for people to kind of continue the path forward and exploring these top concepts a little bit more. Cause again, research is ever evolving and changing. And so we need more work to be done in these areas. Yeah. And also, I mean, handbooks in general, um, they're meant so that you can pull one chapter out and you don't need to read the entire book. And so our handbook does that. But then even within that, like sections one, two, and three, you could pull those out each separately and have a whole other theme of, of research um, happening within those as well. So that's another, 